Hey guys, I want to show you some of the getting started stuff for the animal figures. We're going to call them wire animals. And to do so, we are going to go on the computer and find an animal and then trace it. I've done all these searches on animals and uh, my wife likes the fox, so I'm going to work with the fox. And you'll see that this was a Google search and I picked that one. And when I put a piece of white paper over it, you can see it through pretty clearly. And what I'm gonna do is take a pen. I'm not gonna do a Sharpie. I don't want you to get the Sharpie through the paper on your screen. But I'm gonna do a pen or a pencil. That's about the size I'd like it. So that's maybe two inches across, a little bit more. Could be a tiny bit smaller. And you can do um, things with your browser. You can do Control Plus. So the plus keyboard here. Key on the keyboard. And boy, that's a dirty keyboard. Ew, embarrassing. And uh, enlarge and reduce that, or you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. So let's have a look at that. And that's actually a little more the size I'm looking for. So you can see compared to my pretty big finger, maybe an inch and a half across, almost two. So that's good to trace. And then I can go over my tracing with a Sharpie and have a nice clear model to work with. Well, I wasn't gonna try and do that holding the camera with the need two hands, so that's the pen version of it. And then, as you can imagine, I can take this over and, uh, and maybe make a thicker version of it with a Sharpie. Note to self, don't Sharpie on a nice table. So here you can see a sample of an animal sheet I printed online and we've got a whole variety of animals there but my wife likes foxes so I made a tracing of this and then redid the tracing in Sharpie remember when you draw the Sharpies not to be on a surface where the ink could go through the paper and basically I'm just trying to make the animal out of wire so depending on the order you've done these projects you may have already made the homopolar motor and uh, so we don't really need the battery in these things I have sitting around, but we do need some wire. And so what I'm gonna do is try and get a good estimate of how much wire this is going to take. And one way I can do that is by taking this ball chain I have. And the ball chain is, you've seen them before when you use uh, for a ceiling fan and sometimes for light switches. So I could just very roughly, I haven't tried this before, so. I could roughly stretch this around and imagine that I was going to go the full length of that and through that kind of figure out how much I need. So in this case, it's about like that. So I could probably get away with, in this case, that's less than a, a coil of the copper. And since everyone has several coils, Let's go ahead and do one, and maybe a little extra. If you have a more complicated animal, you'll need extra wire. You can always cut off more. You can't really add to it. So I've got this piece now. And the key here is just without hurting yourself to sort of cut it into this shape. So I figure I'll start with the, the leg here. And just little by little, and you can use the gloves if you like. Um, I have pretty strong hands, but um, might even help to straighten the wire out first. So I'm just going to start with that little piece and then I need to do a 90 degree. And if you need a sharp corner, you can play around with, you know, using things that give you a better corner like this, right? So you can see that's a little bit more abrupt. So got that corner and then I'm going to curve around the other way using my finger so so that curve is not, I wanted it a little tighter so what I can do is sort of if you have needle nose pliers they would be great but we didn't weren't able to provide those to everybody um, but you can futz around with it and if you need to you know don't be shy about using the things you have so and 
I want you to remember perfection is the enemy of the good. In other words, if it keeps you from getting it done, it's no good. So I come all the way back around this way. And in this case, I want that to be more of a fox a tip. So what I'm going to do, rather than cut it, I'm going to, whoops, this has a sharp little edgy thing. I'm going to squeeze it together in a way that I hope makes a nice corner. I am afraid of cutting it because these are so sharp. So maybe what I'll do is I'll squeeze it on the back side here and give it a little nice tip. Because we want the fox to have a pointed tail. Got to keep track, losing track of where I am, right? And then his tail bulges up a little. Got all kinds of fun going on here. Here you can see a couple of animals some other people in my family have made. Here's the fox. Here we have a chicken rooster. You can see a bit more complex stuff here to bend around. An elephant, which was actually had the ears sticking out, so it's not flat. There's, I guess, an elk or a moose and a snake. So this is a little bigger than I thought you should do, but whatever you do, make it interesting. Also, uh, you can do clever things like here's a flower or a moose on top of a flower. You could have decorations. You could actually use this to hold a photo. So this is not a good photo, but say I had a photo, you know, I could do something like this. And now that holds it up depending on where the other end is, or it could be hanging it. You could hang that from something. So. What I just want to show you really quickly is I've got the glue gun here. As always, consider your surfaces. So I'm going to take a penny and simply add a little glue to the base here. Just make a little mound and let that, whoops, you got to hold it in place while I let it dry. It does dry pretty quickly once it's there. So now we have a fox on a penny and I could do something similar with a magnet. Let's say I want the uh, this moose. I can put a gob of glue right there. Mess, messy stuff and place that on the glue count to about 10 and then you're set 
and you guys have these cool little magnets there might be an interesting way to actually wedge that in place so it would hold it even without glue and then finally another option might be to do something with the chain and uh, so for example on the snake I'm going to go through and attach the two ends and now I have my snakeless see that? anyway just a lot of creative clever things you can do be sure to turn off your glue gun if you have a switch Na 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 na